How much do you charge for your art? How much should you charge for your art? So today I'm going to go into a formula that helps with pricing specifically art dolls, but can honestly help pricing most people's different kinds of art. Um, so we're going to go over a few things here. One of them is the formula. One of them is the considerations that you have to take when you're pricing, such as market, like how saturated is your market in the particular subject that you're making. Um, and then the other consideration that I wanted to go over, we'll go over later, but yeah. So this is a, a live video recording, so I apologize if, uh, if I stumble at all, um, I'm not doing a voice over here. I'm actually recording it. So, okay. So here I have a breakdown of how I have personally priced my owls in the past and currently and potentially for the future. Actually, I make life-sized barn owls, snowy owls, uh, phoenixes with wingspans that are four to five feet long and tails that are two to three feet long. Uh, so I have a pretty niche market when it comes to art dolls. Um, and so one of the things that you want to consider, as I said before, is the cost. Now the cost to make the average barn owl for me is about a hundred dollars. Phoenixes run about 150 to 200. Um, so this changes depending on how much you are pricing. Now, not pricing, how much it costs. Now, one thing you want to consider when you're figuring out your costs is it's great to write down how much you're currently spending on things, but you also want to inflate it a little bit because you want to have the materials to make your next project when you buy it, the supplies again. And prices are not always going to be the same. If you buy a bunch of paint or a bunch of fur that's on sale, make sure you write down its normal price because the next time you go to buy it, it's probably not going to be on sale. And if you need to get something, you need to be able to have that money available. So that's something to take into consideration when it comes to cost. Now the next is hours. So this fluctuates a little bit because with art dolls, there's a very specific way to handle things. Um, and I'm just going based off of what I myself do, what I know KP Creations does. Uh, I believe Umbra Tundra does this as well. Um, and what we do is we don't include the original sculpt time unless we are selling the original sculpt. So we, so when we make faces, we will take them and make molds of them and then make casts of them. So we charge the hours that it takes to make the cast and not the original, unless we're selling the original. This is why originals are so much more expensive when it comes to art dolls. Um, so part of this is because you're also having to take into consideration your expertise. If you are making something for the first time, chances are it's going to take you a little bit longer to make it. Whereas if you are really seasoned at it and you know how to make it, it's going to take you less time. So when I, when I made my first barn owl, it was my first art doll and it took me approximately 60 hours to make it. Nowadays, the time ranges from 20 to 30 because I know the process. So you want to take that into consideration when you're looking at the hours, but mostly you want to take that into consideration when you're looking at at your pay per hour because it can kind of even itself out. If you're beginning and this is your first time making your art doll and you know that there are processes that you're going to get faster at, such as sewing, you know you're going to get faster at hand sewing when you're just beginning. You know you're going to get faster at figuring out how to make the armature when you're just beginning. The hours can balance out with the pay. If you just charge like $10 an hour or minimum wage at the very least, you want minimum wage. I cannot stress this enough. Give yourself minimum wage. If you have an exorbitant number of hours put into a piece because it was your first time making it, yes. 
go ahead and dial it back a little bit to what you think is reasonable or what the fair market pricing is on it. This is why researching your competitors is so important. People in your community do know generally how to price. However, with art dolls, I have seen some really unfair pricing. Um, I've seen really beautiful, really intricate pieces that people are only charging $200 for. And looking at it, I know that at least 30 hours went into that project and that is not a fair price. Even if you're charging minimum wage, $10 per hour, and you put 30 hours into it, $200 does not equate. And these are some really gorgeous pieces that I would honestly be charging around $40 to $50 per hour on because they're so beautiful. And they came out so well and they're so intricate. So please, please, I really hope some of those sellers are seeing this because this is so important help your community. If you are selling something that is really beautiful and really intricate and you are underpricing it, you are actually hurting your community. Um, which is why it's, it's really hard for me as an artist to sell higher because I'm like, but these people have such beautiful stuff and they're so intricate. And I know KP Creations has this problem as well. And even though she's gone mainstream, she underprices some of her artwork like her rainbow unicorn was four hundred dollars yes kp i am shaming you in an official video <laughs> don't worry we're friends it's okay um you know that unicorn so easily could have been 800 1500 but because she personally didn't like the way it turned out she undercharged for it and that is one way that you can really help the community is by just fairly pricing your artwork Yes, it's going to take a little bit longer to sell, but if someone wants it and they appreciate it, they will pay. They are willing to pay and they want to support you. They don't want you to do this as a hobby. They want you to do this as a living because this you are an artist. We do not want starving artists. <laughs> okay, rant over. Um, so charge what you're worth. Um, and if you're new to it and it's taking you a really long time and you think you can streamline it a little bit, cut back on the pay per hour. That way you know that you're charging what it's worth versus what the formula tells you. So for my owls, I'm in a little bit of a conundrum because my owls are very unique. They're very large. When I asked KP Creations how much I should charge for my barn owls, she actually told me around three to 5,000 because they're life size and they're posable and they're made with real feathers. And I could not see ever <laughs> charging that much for something that I made for a hundred dollars. Um, so I know that it galls a little bit and it's really hard. It's a struggle. I get it, but try to do your best to charge and like you know i originally started pricing them at 500 now i'm up to a thousand and now i actually have a barn owl that because i put a lot more effort into it this one actually is 30 hours um but there was so much detail work that i put into it because i painted each individual feather with a galaxy and like this I, I hand painted the fur. The fur was all white and now it's black. And and so I'm actually charging 2000 for that one. Um, because I know what it's, I know it's worth it. I, know, I, I feel like it's worth it. But yes, consult your community. Make sure that the people that you're looking at that are in your category are, are pricing fairly as well though. Because honestly, this is what you should expect for $200 for an art doll. This is actually really fairly priced for $200. It's tiny. It's cute. It's detailed. I'm not, I'm not touting my own work. I swear. I promise you, I'm not touting my own work here, but this is what you should expect for $200. Not a 12 inch six tailed, beautiful Kitsune. That is not worth $200. That is worth at least $600. So if you see those, 
just like drop them a message, please, and tell them, hey, your your artwork is worth more. <laughs> because as a competitor, I can't really tell them that. <laughs> as as I am a buyer, um, as well. Like I have, I don't know if I can actually show it in camera without knocking down some of my other art, but I'm gonna try and grab her and see if I can't. I am a buyer as well. Um, I have bought, I've bought this beauty from um, Umbra Tundra, um, and I know, super great view, but my desk is a mess, I'm sorry. Um, so I am actually a buyer as well. I do support my other artists as much as I can, and this, this beautiful, this beautiful Alolan Vulpix, Umbra only charged me $300 for it, and... I so very much would have been willing to pay six hundred, um, because that is, that is what it is worth. Um, so the other thing you want to take into consideration when you are pricing your stuff is to include the shipping cost, include the taxes. Like if you're selling on Etsy, they're going to include a seller's fee. There are online calculators that you can um, look at to see how much you should be charging for the taxes. And include your advertising cost. You are an artist. You should not be eating any of this. And I mean this in the most sincere way. Do not eat this. This is not part of your cost. Um, you know, sellers pay shipping. Go ahead and market free shipping. But include that in your cost. That way you're not having to pay that. Because you shouldn't have to pay that. You're, you're an artist. You're the seller. Buyer pays shipping. Um, at the very least, yes, taxes, sure, fine, whatever, but preferably include all of that in your price. Um, so I think I've gone over all of the topics. Uh, if you have any questions about pricing your art, honestly, most of this applies to, excuse the dirty fingernails, I just got done airbrushing a black bird, um, if you have any questions about pricing your art, please leave a comment. Let me know. I will reply. Um, join KP Creations Discord channel if you feel like you need a more um, more in depth info on art dolls. Uh, but we we honestly are pretty good with all art groups. Um, we're a very tight knit community. We're very um, very willing to help. Um, so please, you know, uh, join the Discord if you do art dolls, if you do art in general. We have lots of different kind of artists on there, including one really amazing digital artist called Verosk who lives in Germany. He is awesome. Um, totally shouting him out because he, he is, he does some amazing work. And so often he doesn't actually get to do like the really cool macabre artwork that he really likes because people commission other stuff from him. Um, and he is really, really awesome and a really nice artist. Um, but yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe if you want more art doll content. Um, that is mostly what I do. But, you know, this this works for a lot of different kinds of art. Um, and just, you know, know your worth, please. And uh, one of my future videos is probably going to be on how to market art. Um, so that'll be fun. I, I, I hate marketing, by the way. I'm an artist. I'm not a marketing specialist. Um, but I've had to learn it. I've ha I, I had to learn it when I wanted to sell art. So yeah, um, that's all for now. Blue out. <laughs>